Hi and welcome. Short notice before we get started, this video is part of a comprehensive GitHub Actions course that I have available on Udemy. The link with a big discount is in the description of this video. And if you don't want to miss any upcoming videos or courses that I publish, make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow the videos. In this lecture, we will discuss workflow events and how they can be used in GitHub Actions. Basically, events in workflows are triggers, right? So we can think of events as different triggers, and there are many ways that we can trigger GitHub workflows. The first group here is if an event happened at the repository level. Examples would be a push to the repository. We can also specify different branches. We can filter some of the events, and we'll discuss that later on. An event related to issues, for example, an issue is created or it is updated. There are events also related to pull requests. If a pull request is opened, is closed, is synchronized. There are also events related to pull request reviews, forks, and many, many more. So there are many events here. I will show you in a few minutes the, the page from GitHub, the documentation where you can find all the available events. But first of all, let's understand the groups here. The second group is a manual trigger. So we can trigger workflows from the UI. As long as we specify the trigger in the GitHub YAML file, the, the button to trigger the workflow in the UI is going to become available. We also can trigger workflows via API calls and we can trigger workflows from within other workflows. Later on, we will discuss the concept of reusable workflows and we will see how this happens in practice. And the final group is the schedule. We can actually run a workflow as a cron job as long as we specify the schedule for the workflow as a cron expression and this will enable us to run the workflow automatically without us having to go and, and click on the UI or trigger it via an API call or from within another workflow. If you run a simple Google search for GitHub Actions events, the first link that appears tells us all the events that trigger workflows. You can also find this, this page here via the GitHub Actions documentation using workflows and then the section here, events that trigger workflows. As you can see here on the right, there are so many events and there are many different things that we can add to our workflow file. This is extremely flexible, which means that it will probably and most likely offer the, the type of event that you need for a specific situation. The most used ones are labels, issues, or we have here the push. And this is also very, very much used or whenever you have a release here, for example, or a pull request or a pull request review. So this become, this, these are the, the most common ones, but nonetheless, we have events for everything deployments, project related events, and many more. And as we scroll here, then you can see that it defines both the event as well as the, the different variations or the different activity types within this event here that we can mention in our workflow. We're gonna discuss that in the activity type section, but for now, just get familiar with this documentation. I think it's useful for you to already know that it exists. And here you can see at the bottom how we can actually use that. Once we gather the types here in our activity type section, then you understand exactly what this means. For now, you can simply think if we go here down to the push event, you see this is very similar to what we have done in our first practical exercise. The only difference here is that this is in a new line. And as it happens, we can specify multiple triggers for the same workflow. We just have to provide here an array instead of a single entry. And this will allow us to run the same workflow in case different events happen. So much for the theoretical discussion. I would recommend you keep this page somewhere accessible or you can always find it via Google because there is, of course, no need for you to memorize all these things. You're not expected to do that at any point in time, but it's good to know that there is a good, very comprehensive documentation you can always refer to whenever you are looking for a specific event in GitHub Actions. With that in mind, let's take a short break and come back to our workflow events practical exercise. Well, 
welcome. Let's now discuss workflow events in a second practical exercise. We're going to start by creating a new file under the .github forward slash workflows folder. And we're going to call this file 02 workflow events. .yaml, the yaml is important here. Once again, that's the extension we have to use. And we will define a name here. And this name is going to be 02 workflow events. Now here, the main focus of this, of this um, lecture is to discuss the on property of the job. So let's start by writing down push here and let's get the jobs section out of the way because we want to then focus on how we can expand the on section here so that we can add more triggers. Let's have a simple job. This is going to be called echo and this is going to run on Ubuntu latest. And this is going to have a single step. And within the steps here, we're going to add a, an, an array. So the dash to identify the first element of the array. And the name here is simply going to be show the trigger. Now, when we execute, and here we can add a run. And when we run, when we create a workflow, GitHub provides us a lot of information around different factors here that are related to the workflow. One of these things is the event that triggered this workflow. So how can we access that? Let's simply echo and we'll say, I've been triggered by A or N. And then here we can access the event by using this interesting pattern, the dollar sign, and then curly brackets, curly brackets, so double curly brackets here. And then we can use GitHub dot, and you can see that this provides a, a lot of things that we can use here. All of this is available as we start running our workflow. This is all provided by GitHub. We will discuss this. This is called a context, the GitHub context. We'll also discuss this in details. But the only thing that we're interested in here is the event name. Now, if we hover over the event name here, then you will see that we have a little documentation that says that this is going to give us the name of the event that triggered the workflow run. So we're going to simply say interpolate this value here with an echo statement, and then we can use this syntax. This is specific to GitHub Actions, and this allows us to then retrieve the value of the event that triggered this workflow. And then we're just going to add something like this. And that's it for the section here in our job. So this is the first version of this file. Let's save this. And now in our terminal, we can edit and then we can commit with whatever message you would like to commit. Once you write your message, simply commit this and then push. Let's now jump to GitHub and see the result of this run here. Once we are in GitHub, we can come under the actions tab here. And now we, you will see that we have two workflows mentioned here. Once again, these are the names that we define in the workflow files. And if you look carefully, you will see that there are two workflow runs here. Why is it so? Well, remember that we have our first workflow, which is the building blocks workflow. And this workflow here, if we click on any of the runs, and you can see that once I click on this specific workflow, it simply shows the, or it only shows the flows related to the execution um, runs related to that workflow. And if we click here, we can then view the workflow file. And remember, this is also triggered on push. That's why we are seeing here two workflow executions once we push the code to GitHub. Now let's have a look at our 02, the workflow events one, and we want to see the result of this. So if we open it, and then we open the echo statement and we show the trigger, then we will see that I have been triggered by a push event. Let's now add more entries here to our own key so that we can trigger this workflow from different events. And we can either specify this as an array. So for example, we can add push and then we could say here, for example, pull request, right? This is possible. We can also specify this as an object. So if we were to add it like this, push and the colon, and pull request and a colon. This is also valid syntax. And I do prefer this one, this syntax here, because then it already prepares this workflow. It already gives the possibility of customizing, for example, the pull request, we might be interested in running only for a specific branch or only if the pull request is created. And we can then um, customize this same thing for push, right? We can filter by branch name and we can customize this more easily if we already have the object format. So I, I would leave it as it is. Uh, it's also possible to use the array if you prefer to do so, but I like this format a little bit more. 
let's now add another one here and it, this is going to be the scheduled one and the scheduled one we're going to add here an entry you can see that there is an error here and once we hover over this is an unexpected value that is because of the indentation here right so the indentation needs to be fixed and once we fix that then you can see here that there is another error that says hey we are expecting something for this schedule and this is an array this is a list and we can simply pass cron and then a cron expression now if you look here this is going to tell you hey this is not a valid cron expression so lots of validation going on here very helpful let's have a look at what we or how we can generate how we can create a cron expression this is more if you are not familiar with the, the cron syntax but i just want to then um, have a look here in the cron expression generator and i did check two of them beforehand just want to highlight something here if you go with the first one and um, you will see that it has six digits right so it has uh, seconds minutes hours days uh, the day month and year now if we were to use this in github action with the six six digits here for the or the, the six elements for cron this would give us an error let's just try to use it here we're going to say zero zero and then star 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 and as you can see as soon as we add six elements this is not supported with five elements that is fine so um, we're gonna go with the syntax here luckily for us this is how the second one works so we can just come here and then you can start defining so if you want to run for example at zero minute zero hour of every day then you would simply say zero zero and then it runs every day at 12 a.m. right so if you um, then want to specify a certain day of the month and a certain month of the year or even a day of the week then you can do that by specifying this um, stars this asterisks here this, if we do not specify them then simply means all right so here instead of doing it like so we can actually run this workflow every five minutes for example it's going to run every five minutes it's going to run every 10 minutes and github actions or github supports uh, the granularity of running up to every five minutes if you were to try to run every minute that would not be supported so we will go with the every five minutes expression we can just copy this and paste here in our ide right so now no errors with cron and we can add one more here and this is called this is a very good one it's called the workflow dispatch and workflow dispatch is the manual trigger from the UI that we have discussed in the slides by adding this here to our own keyword this will enable us triggering the workflow from the UI okay so I think this is a, a good example there are different ways here that we will trigger the workflow we will now go to github actions and we will try all of them but before we just need to add this and then commit with whatever message you want i'll simply save it like this let's now push this and go to github back in github if we click here on the actions tab then you see again our our runs started and now if we click on 02 workflow events we will see that there is a new section here on the page that says that this workflow has a workflow dispatch event trigger therefore we can trigger the workflow by clicking here and selecting the branch once we click on run workflow and we refresh the page it might take a few seconds to appear this is already here for us simply manually run by me now once we click here and we inspect the result of the echo statement then we will see that this was triggered by a workflow dispatch event so this is different than the one we had before and if we were to come back here and click on the second one or rather the second one on the list then we will see that this is different this was triggered by our push let's now see if we can trigger the workflow from a pull request for that we have to come here and create a new branch so let's view all the branches and we'll create a new branch and this is going to be simply test workflow trigger right we, we will branch out from main we can click on create a new branch and then under our code here we can select the branch or rather here right uh, main and we can select test workflow trigger and then as you can see here there is something running we're going to come back to this in a bit um, and let's just try to edit this we are not going to uh, merge this pull request we just want to see that this has been edited and then we will commit the changes 
we will commit directly to the test workflow trigger branch, commit the changes here, and then we can open a pull request by here comparing the, the test workflow trigger with the main base branch and then simply clicking on create the pull request. This here opens up the pull request and as you can see we also have a couple of things that got triggered here and as you can see if we show all the checks some of them are due to push right so these were the pushes that we have executed um, once we have committed to the to the branch and then this is the event that was triggered by the pull request if we click here on the details then we will see that under the event here we it, it has been triggered by a pull request event as you can see, this is fairly recent here. That's why the cron job didn't appear yet. But if we wait a few minutes and then we refresh the page, we should be able to see it. After waiting a few more minutes here, as you can see, the workflows are not run yet. So I did a little bit of research and as it happens here, there are some comments saying that even after we set to run every five minutes, it runs in, in 15 minutes, right? So it might be the case that there is some delay until GitHub registers and runs the workflow for the first time. We're gonna wait a few more minutes and see what happens. And just as I was speaking and I was showing you the other tab, I came back here and as you can see, here is our first run from the cron schedule, right? You can see here that this is a scheduled workflow run. And if we were to click here and then have a look at the logs, then we will see that this was triggered by a schedule event. Perfect. So we have explored different types of triggers. As I mentioned in the previous lecture, when we go through the documentation, there are many more you can try. Before we wrap up this, this practical exercise, let's just go back to our workflow file. And we can actually do that from the browser here. If we go back to workflow events and then here we click anywhere and then we view the workflow file, we can actually edit the file directly on the browser. And the only thing I want to do is I just want to remove the schedule here because I just don't want this workflow to run every five minutes. Otherwise, we'll have a ton of runs on our actions tab and it can get confusing. So if we just leave on push, pull request and workflow dispatch, that's OK. You could also remove the push one here if you want to so that we don't trigger this workflow every time you push to this repository. Actually, maybe this is even better. So I'm just gonna commit these changes here and we will say, now you can add whatever message you want to. I will follow the pattern here and then we can just click on commit changes. Once we do that, we can also come back here to the code. We can have a look at all the branches and then we can simply remove this test workflow trigger here. Let's remove this. We can delete, it's no problem. Um, and then the pull request here should also be closed, right? So we're just doing a little bit of cleanup and now we have just the, the main branch here. Perfect. We can also come here to the workflows and in the first workflow, we can actually edit this to use the workflow dispatch instead of push so that we don't rerun this workflow again every time we push to the main branch. And normally I'll follow this convention. I waited until this lecture to change this and the convention I would like to follow is as we are working on a certain workflow file we'll normally have the push event here triggering the workflow but then once we are done we will set this to workflow dispatch so that we can focus on specific workflows at a time once we commit the changes here and then commit directly to the main branch once we do that then we will have everything fine here in our in our GitHub page. And if we refresh this, you will see that nothing was triggered, right? So if we come here to the actions, you will see that the last commit that triggered something was this reduce triggers here and not, so the last commit when we changed the trigger from push to workflow event did not trigger any workflow. And that's intended because we have removed the on push trigger. Great, I think that's enough for this exercise. As we again advance on the course, we will come back to these triggers and try different variations. But for now, I think it was a very good way of exploring the different ways that we can trigger workflows. Let's take a short pause and come back in the next lecture.